British singer Jessie J recently revealed that she has been diagnosed with Meniere's disease, writing in an Instagram post that the condition made her feel like someone crawled into her ear and turned a hairdryer on. The question is, what exactly is this disease? Joining us this morning to break it down and how people who are diagnosed with it can cope, our friend Dr. Scott Ackerman. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good to see you, Vic. Yeah, you as well. So she posted this and a lot of people are going to what else but Google or WebMD to find out exactly what this means and if it can happen to them or their loved ones. It's somewhat common. Yes, it is. So Meniere's disease uh, is somewhat common and people get it usually later in life than she, usually in their 50s or 60s, uh, but certainly can get it in your, in your 30s. And what happens is you have this feeling, just like she said, a blow dryer inside her ear. So you have this feeling of heaviness and fullness in your ear. And with that, it's a disease really of the inner ear. So that's the part of the ear that controls balance and, uh, and stability. So frequently you get this, uh, this, this feeling of dizziness and with dizziness, you know, you get nausea that goes with dizziness. Uh, this blow dryer sound that she says, it's really a ringing that you have in your ear. And so this fullness and ringing, also you may have diminishment. And so what differentiates this from other issues with the ears is that this is only on one side. And so if it's on one side, you have this diminished um, response. Uh, that's typically Meniere's disease. Mm -hmm. And with something like this, how treatable is it? There's no treatment for it. You know, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. So meaning that if you have these symptoms, you can't find any other reason for the cause, then you assume it's Meniere's disease. So we do CAT scans and MRIs to make sure there's no uh, tumors or anything functional um, in the brain. But there really is no good treatment for it. So the treatments really are just to treat the symptoms. They don't really treat the disease. So if you're getting uh, dizzy or lightheaded, you can try some uh, uh, seasickness uh, medicine like the scopolamine patches, or if you're getting uh, nauseated, nauseated, you could take anti-nausea pills like Zofran or Composine. Um, sometimes there's some fullness of fluid. Uh, fluid builds up in the ear. And so uh, doctors recommend uh, a diuretic to drain the fluid out. Um, and, so, and there's ways you can change your diet, perhaps, going to low salt diet, limit alcohol, that also help you from retaining too much fluid. And this retention of fluid sometimes is associated with more symptoms. Mm -hmm. Rarely surgery. Um, uh, it's very rare that one would do surgery. If, if imaging would show there's a lot of fluid in there, a surgeon could go in and drain some of that fluid, but that's usually not, not, not used. Are there risk factors that would maybe contribute to it to make you more vulnerable to getting this disease or is it just random or genetic? Yeah, I don't know of any risk factors. Some people that have certain allergies, um, uh, the allergies can kind of set it off. And so if you have allergies, if you can avoid those foods that you or those uh, items or things you may be allergic to, allergies could set it off. Um, that's really the only risk factor that I know of. Some people think it's an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system is fighting itself. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a risk factor if you already have some underlying autoimmune disorder, such as lupus or something like that. Mm -hmm. So still a lot of unknowns, but the moral of the story is if something doesn't feel right with your body, go get checked out. Absolutely. Thank you, Vic. Dr. Scott Ackerman with the Ackerman Cancer Center. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much.